Aristotle's model of communication puts the speaker in the central position and suggests that the speaker is the one who drives the entire communication. Burden's model of communication takes into account the emotional aspects of the message. Berlus model of communication operates on the SMCR model. This is the most basic form of communication the person engaged in today. It is less of a model and more of an identification of parts of communication. As a whole, the SMCR model relies on four key elements. Source the person who originates the message. He will translate the information into a message. Message is the content that is being communicated. Then he sends the message through a certain channel. Channel is the medium being used to transmit the message. Then the receiver will decode the message. Receiver is the person whom the message is directed toward. This model was first developed in 1960 by David Berlo, athletician and founder of the communication department at Michigan State University. In 1960, David Berlo wrote a book entitled The Process of Communication. This model used in television, newspaper, magazine ads, advertising, social media, and other forms of communication. Berlus model could be summarized as a source, delivering a message through a platform to a recipient. Two actions are inherent in this model, and coding happens on the sender's end, involving how the message is transmitted the receiver must decode the message through the channel that was used. Noticeably, absent in the SMCR model is feedback from the recipient back to the sender. In other words, it is a one-way process, there are factors that affect the communication process. On the source, we have communication skills, attitudes, knowledge, social system, and culture. While on the message, there are content, elements, treatment, structure, and code. Then on the channel, we have seeing, hearing, touching, smelling, and tasting. These are the five senses that will serve as the media to deliver the message to the receiver. On the receiver, the same factors affect the communication process. Just like the source, we have communication skills, attitudes, knowledge, social system, and culture. Let us now study all the factors in detail. First element is the source. The source is also known as the sender, the one, from whom the thoughts or information originates. He is the one responsible to transfer the information to the receiver, after carefully putting his thoughts into words. The source transfers his information to the recipient with the help of communication skills, attitudes, knowledge, social system, and culture. These are the factors related to the sender and is also the same in the case of the receiver. First factor is the communication skills. The communication skill of a person is a factor that affects the communication process. If the sender has good communication skills, the message will be communicated better 
than if the sender's communication skills are not good similarly if the receiver cannot grasp the message. Then the communication will not be effective. The speaker must possess excellent communication skills. To make his communication effective and create an impact among the listeners, the speaker must know where to take poses, where to repeat the sentences, how to speak a particular sentence, how to pronounce a word, and so on. Second factor is attitudes. The attitude of the sender and the receiver creates the effects of the message the person's attitude towards. Self the receiver and the environment. Change the meaning and the effect of the message. Example, as a speaker, he must portray his eagerness to impart knowledge to the audience. Show his passions for his subject and ex exude the level of sincerity in his emotion when communicating to his audience. In order to do the same thing as he did, third knowledge familiarity with the subject of the message makes the communicated message have their effect more knowledge on the subject matter makes the sense the message effectively in other words knowledge is the clarity of information which the speaker wants to convey to the receiver one must be thorough in what he is speaking with complete in-depth knowledge of the subject fourth social system values beliefs laws rules religion and many other social factors affect the sender's way of communicating the message. It creates a difference in the generation of the message, place, and situation also fall under social system. As a speaker, he must consider the social system in order for the receiver to feel the sincerity of the speaker, and probably the receiver will show his interest to listen. Example, imagine a politician delivering a speech when he proposes to construct a temple in a Muslim-dominated area. What would be the reaction of the listeners? Possibly, they would not be interested to listen. Was there any problem in the communication skills of the leader? Or he didn't have the right attitude? The displeasure of the listeners was simply because the speaker ignored the social setup of the place. Where he was communicating, he forgot the sentiments, cultural beliefs, religious feelings of the audience. Had it been a Hindu-dominated society, his speech would have been very impressive. The last factor is culture. The cultural differences makes messages different. A person from one culture might find something offensive, which is very much accepted in other culture. Culture refers to the cultural background of the community or the listeners, where the speaker is communicating or delivering his speech. As a speaker, he must be sensitive in every word or action that he will utter and portray. If he wants his audience to listen, those are the factors affecting the source. Second element message. A message is a substance that is being sent by the sender to the receiver. It might be in the form of voice, audio, text, video, or other media. When an individual converts his thoughts into words. A message is created. This is called encoding. There are five key factors affecting the message. First, content. Content is the thing that is in the message. The whole message from beginning to end is the content. Content is the script of the conversation. It is simpler words the backbone of any communication. It is very important for the speakers to carefully choose the words and take good care of the content of the speech. The content has to be sensible, accurate, related to the thought to hit the listeners bang on and create an immediate impact 
Second element. Elements are the nonverbal things that talk along with the content, like gestures, signs, language, etc. It has been observed that speech alone cannot bring a difference in communication. Keep on constantly speaking and the listeners will definitely lose interest after some time the speech must be coupled with lots of hand movements, gestures, postures, facial expressions, body movements to capture the attentions of the listeners and make the speech impressive. All of these gestures come under the elements of the message. Third treatment. Third treatment is the way one treats his message and is conveyed to the listeners or receiver. It is also affects the feedback of the receiver. One must understand the importance of the message and must know how to handle it. If a boss wants to fire any of his employees, he has to be authoritative and can't express his message in a casual way. This is referred to as the treatment of the message. One must understand how to present this message so that the message is conveyed in the most accurate form. Next is structure. The structure of the message or the way it has been structured or arranged affects the effectiveness of the message. A message cannot be expressed in one go. The speaker must think about how he will organize his message in such a way that the receiver could get his interest to listen and grasp the message. The last one is code. It is the form in which the message is sent. It might be in the form of language, text, video, etc. Enter their own code of logs will never open. Enter a wrong password, you will not be able to open your email account. In the same way, the code has to be correct in communication. Your body movements, your language, your expressions, your gestures are the codes of the message and have to be accurate. Otherwise, the message gets distorted and the recipient will never be able to decode the correct information. Those are the factors affecting the message. The third element is channel. Channel is the medium used to send the message in mass communication and other forms of communication. Technical machines might be used as channel, like a telephone, internet, etc. But in general communication, the five senses of human being are the channel for the communication flow, and it affects the effectiveness of the channel. First factor, hearing. The receiver could receive the message through the sounds that the speaker uttered. Second, seeing. The receiver could perceive the message through the visual materials displayed in any platform used by the speaker like pictures, graphs, cinema, and video films, videotapes, paintings, drawings, cartoons, prints, designs, etc. Then, touching. The receiver could get a message when he holds, caresses, feels, or anything that encounters some things with his hands, like holding hands. Smelling. The receiver could receive the message through the smelling like the aroma of coffee or flour. Then the last one, tasting. Taste also provides the information to be sent as a message. All five senses are the channels that helps human beings to communicate with each other. The last element is receiver. When the message reaches the receiver, he tries to understand what the listener wants to convey, and then responds accordingly. This is also called as decoding. The receiver should be on the same platform as the speaker for a smooth flow of information and better understanding of the message. He should possess good communication skills to understand what the speaker is trying to convey. 
he should have the right attitude to understand the message in a positive way. His knowledge should also be at par with the speaker and must know about the subject he should also be from the same social and cultural background, just like the speaker. Criticisms of Berlus SMC are model. There is no concept of feedback, so the effect is not considered. There is no concept of noise or any kind of barriers. In communication process, it is a linear model of communication. There is no two-way communication both of the speaker and the receiver must be similar according to all factors mentioned above or must be on a common ground for a smooth conversation, which is sometimes not practical in the real scenario. This is the end of our unpacking the Berlus model of communication. This is an example of Shannon Weaver model of communication. But first, let us define what is Shannon Weaver model of communication. This model is more technological than other linear models. Its primary value is explaining how messages is lost or distorted in the process of communication. Weaver model of communication was created when Claude Elwood Shannon in 1948 wrote an article in Bell System Technical Journal with Warren Weaver entitled A Mathematical Theory of Communication that was later came to be known as Shannon Weaver Model of Communication or Mother of All Models. Shannon was an American mathematician and as an electrical engineer, the model was made to improve technical communication, mainly for telephonic communication to maximize capacity with minimum noise. On the other hand, Weaver was a scientist who applied it for all kinds of communications to develop effective communication and the model became famous as Shannon Weaver Model. In engineering, the model was also called information theory and is used academically to calculate transmission through machine and also has a formula. There are seven key concepts of Shannon Weaver model of communication. First, the sender or information source. The person who makes the message chooses the channel and sends the message. Second, the encoder or transmitter. The sender who uses machine which converts message into signals or binary data, which might as well directly refer to the machine. Third, the channel, the medium used to send the message. Fourth, the coder or receiver, the machine used to convert signals or binary data into message or the receiver translates the message from signals. Fifth, receiver or destination, the person who gets the message or the place where the message must reach. The receiver provides feedback according to the message. If the message is distracted by noise, it will affect the communication flow between the sender and the receiver. Sixth, the noise. The physical disturbances like environment, people, etc., which does not let the message get to the receiver as what is sent and tends to cause misunderstanding. There are two types of noise, internal noise and external noise. Internal noise happens when the sender makes a mistake and coding a message or receiver makes a mistake decoding the message. External noise happens when something external, not in the control of sender or receiver, impedes with the message. And lastly, the feedback. It is the response of the receiver letting the sender know that they got the message. The feedback was not originally proposed by Shannon Weaver in 1948. Nervin Wiener came up with a feedback step in response to criticism where the messages are only going one way or linear nature in approach. Hi Marie! Hello Liana, what's up? Um, yeah, uh, I need your help. Sure, what can I do? Um, so I know that you're a great cook and I really want to do this cookie recipe but I don't know how. Can you send me the recipe? Sure, wait. And there you go. Oh, I know this recipe. Really? Then what should I do first? First, you need to put the butter. Okay, wait. Let me do it. Okay, now I'm done pouring the water. What should I do next? Wait, water? I said the butter. Oh, I thought you said pour the water. No, I clearly said the butter. And 
and that's fine. Can you just type over? Sorry, can you say that again? As shown in the example of Shannon Weaver model of communication, Leona sent a message via video call to her best friend Mary asking for a guide on how to cook a cookie referring to the recipe that Leona sent to her. But because of the sudden external noise, Leona didn't get what Mary said and made a mistake. Here, Leona represents the sender information source. The encoder is the mobile phone of Leona. The channel is the mobile network. The external noise is the distraction that suddenly occurred during their conversation. The decoder is mobile phone of Mary. And lastly, Anna represents the receiver. Leona makes the message and sends it to her best friend Mary through a technological channel which is a mobile network. The transmitter or the mobile phone converts the message into signal understandable to the machine. The message is sent in signal through a medium. Then Mary's mobile phone or signal receiver has to receive the message so Mary can understand and interpret it to send feedback. But due to the external noise, during the video call, it caused problems in the communication process between Leona and Mary. The communication problem that happened between Leona and Mary can be placed under effectiveness problem. According to Shannon Weaver, there are three levels of main problems of communication, namely the technical problem, semantic problem, and effectiveness problem. Technical problem answers the question, how a channel causes a problem such as when a machine important for the communication of the message has a fault. Semantic problem. This is when the message that was sent is different from the message that was received. Effectiveness problem answers the question, how effectively does the message cause reaction or how well the message can cause a response from the receiver.